What's up, Foot Clan? We got a great show for you today. We're tackling some trending or ending topics, some very hot debates on the show between myself and Jason. And then we've got the Mike Williams signing, the Jerry Judy money, a whole lot more to talk about. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you Thursday, March 21st. Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, the Rapscallion in the house over there in Deucer's Alley. Over there in Deucer's Alley. <laughs> there they are. There they are. hey And uh, looking good, Al, in particular. Really like what you got going on. You got the pink shirt. Thank and you. all the palm trees on your shirt. They're, they're that's pal- right. They are palm trees. Yeah, that's what yeah. I was saying. Um, but uh, Al has leaned into a much more like, uh, I'm cruising every day kind of lifestyle. Like every, he, he's wearing most of his cruise attire. It makes him feel he like he- only have cruise attire at it, this point. It, it makes him feel like he's about to go on vacation or do something fun and instead of coming to a job okay. where he's despised and rejected. I, well, the, now it makes sense. Is that uh, accurate? Any, oh, any yeah. retort from, from nah. Deucer's Alley? You never know when a cruise ship's going to pull up with <laughs> occupancy and, and yeah. need somebody to jump on. And he would jump right out of here. That's for sure. After the way you treat him, Jason. Yeah, well, because I would be on his back and make him carry me there. Into the cruise ship. Yeah. Uh, welcome, one and all. NFL news to talk about. A couple of interesting pieces of news. And then we have trending or ending a mailbag episode today as well uh how are you doing mr moore doing fairly well um i'm I'm excited for this season this uh prospect season the nfl draft i don't it's been a while since i've been this excited for the nfl draft so uh, special things in store this year yeah there's there's gonna be a lot of you know big time long-term fantasy contributors coming from this draft the wide receiver crop, in particular, the top end of it, is it has the potential to look like one of the best classes in in a decade. Could it be a twenty fourteen caliber class? Yeah, no, that it's twenty twenty four now. Oh, so it's Whoa. been a decade. Is it just the fours? Yes. Okay, it's guaranteed. But um, yeah, the draft's going to be fun. Reminder: ultimatedraftkit.com. Head over there. The dynasty pass. Uh, you can. Jump right in. The post-combine update, rookie rankings, startup rankings, production profiles, team opportunity charts, free agent tracker, injury trackers, dynasty trade targets. And if you get the dynasty pass, which is in the UDK Plus, that's going to come with the entire Ultimate Draft Kit. You know, when that season rolls around on June 1st, but you get the pre-order pricing right now. So that's ultimatedraftkit.com. And let's jump into the news. News and notes from around the league. Jerry Judy <laughs> has oh. persuaded the Cleveland Browns to give him a three year, $41 million guaranteed contract extension that's worth up to $58 million. Uh, Chris Cabot of Equity Sports. Oh, baby. <laughs> You, sir, are a master. How did you convince the Browns to do this? I mean, this is a lot of money for a very underwhelming player. Yeah, I mean, I know he's 24. I think I've been per- I've been convinced in the past that he was going to emerge. I mean, he he did finish at 21 fantasy-wise back in 2022. In 15 games, 67 for 972 and six. So the Browns were four seasons into his career. He hasn't hit a thousand yards yet. To get 41 million guaranteed locked in, it just seems 
unnecessary. Through 57 career games for Jerry Judy, he has been a top 24 wide receiver 11 times. That would be 19% of the time he was a top 24 player. Obviously, they think very highly of him. Yeah, I mean, they, they are uh, expecting him to come in and play an important role. We're, we're going to talk about David Njoku uh, in the trend or, trending or ending, and this money says that the Browns are expecting, you know, nay, demanding that he is the number two target in this offense. That That's what they are wanting to, to shell out a $58 million deal for a Jag. Yeah, Kyle, you should uh, let us know the Amari Cooper contract situation when we talk about Njoku later because I'm curious what the future is going to look like. They also don't have a settled running back situation. Deonta Foreman was added to the Browns, played for the Bears, was benched by the Bears. Well, uh, uh, you skipped a step. Played for the Bears. Yeah. Was really good for the yeah, Bears. Yeah, And then was benched by the Bears. That's true. I never understood it. They have Jerome Ford. They have Deonta Foreman. They have Nick Chubb on the roster currently. Nick Chubb is, uh, they'd save $11 million against the cap if they cut him. He's recovering from a pretty catastrophic knee injury. And so... It would save a lot of money. They obviously have a I lot of money. I still don't think they're going to do it. I'm gonna so stick I, with, I was going to put you on I'm the gonna spot. I'm going to stick with that. I don't think they're letting go of Nick Chubb. Uh, if, if they do, there's a twisted irony of the fact that, like, Sean Watson and Jerry Judy have never done anything, and Nick Chubb is the record setter yards per carry in the history of the NFL. Like, he's right up there with Jamal Charles. And he's been an awesome Cleveland Brown. I mean, th if they were to cut him while he's recovering from this injury, it would be bad PR. And I, obviously, the Browns I just think would they're just keep never him. do anything with bad PR. No. Ever. They you, shy away from... Can you from... picture the Watts and Judy billboards? <laughs> I can. Just a new identity for the roster? It, it seems very Browns. Yeah. Mike Williams. There he goes. One year deal worth up to fifteen million dollars with the New York Football Jets. How do you feel about this? So Mike Williams, uh, his timeline. He should be healthy. He should be ready to go. Pretty it was, good. It was a week three injury um, for his ACL. They're they're giving him a lot of money to go in and get to play opposite of Garrett Wilson, and they desperately needed a number two. I mean, they they didn't. Alan Lazard was not it. There was no one else there that could, like, stretch the field. Right now it'll be Wilson, Mike Williams, Xavier Gibson. Those will be their their top three wide receivers. It's a good wide receiver room when you got Brees Hall in the backfield and, uh, what, Conk Conk at uh, tight end? Yeah. I think I lean the more positive side for this one-year deal than I, I imagine others do. Yeah. But it, maybe not you. No, it sounds it, like you kind of maybe like it. I do, I do kind of like it. I, I think it's a great landing spot for all parties. Sometimes when a wide receiver shows up, you say, this is good for the quarterback. Or sometimes you say, this is just a great landing spot for the wide receiver. doesn't really change the quarterback. I think this is really good for the team. I think it's a great landing spot for Mike Williams. The opportunities will be there for him. He plays a very different role than the Garrett Wilson role. And obviously, if you are a believer in Aaron Rodgers and you want this offense to be good, they needed a number two wide receiver. So... I, I think most people expected them to go after wide receiver in this draft, and they still could. They I could add they, a third. Yeah, you know, Gibson might not be that guy because he's not that guy. I I think he's a pretty good player, but I do think they need to add somebody. And Mike Williams has to come out and say he'll be ready for Week One. And whenever you have to come out and say that, recovering from an injury, that means that there's like <laughs> there's a risk factor. And Mike Williams is the only NFL player who at the peak of his jump, the gravity on earth changes. And he crashes down at a rate of speed not congruent with Sir Isaac Newton. No. It is a, it's like another planet. Well, a lot of people don't realize that when he elevates, yeah. he gains mass. Oh, okay. So that's that's why that's why the fall I didn't is. I know you're a scientist. Yeah, well, you know, when you are super into fantasy football uh, spreadsheets, you learn these things. Okay. The Raiders decided to muddy the waters. Did Which they? we knew they would. Oh, of course they did. You think of this as muddy water. Oh, yeah. Guarantee. They signed Alexander Madison. They have Zamir White. I expect them to also draft a running back somewhere. This is a disgusting backfield to prognosticate. Um, I don't... It, 
Look, I've never liked Alexander Madison. I'm on record. Mm -hmm. Never, ever, ever, ever liking him. That is true. You've talked very poorly about him for many years. And last year, uh, when Mike was very pro Madison, you basically talked about every other running back in the league is better than him. And yet, Minnesota got him, gave him a lot of play. And he runs as hard as he can run. And that's the kind of player that the Raiders love. And Zamir White is not a world beater. He was probably a bottom third running back starter in the NFL. And so I think adding Madison just muddies. They're going to run the ball a ton, and I think they're going to do it with multiple people. And I don't think that's what I wanted in Las Vegas. Now, you might believe in Zamir White yeah, more, I, but I, I've watched him play. You know who he reminds me of? Who? Alexander Madison. <laughs> so you love him. Um, just fine. Just They're yeah. fine. Madison doesn't suck, okay? There are running backs that straight up are terrible. Um, he's not that. But he's not like a winner. Like, he's not going to help you compared kind of, I, to the – you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I know he's exactly just, what you're saying. He's he's, he's, a he's lunch, just a guy. He's, he's a lunch pail, go to work, run as hard as they can. He's A.J. Dillon. Z yeah, that's a good comp. Zamir White, at least, is more athletic. I think he has more opportunity, and I believe he's the starter here. Now, it's not going to be what we saw with Josh Jacobs where he gets all the work, all the work, all the work, then Josh Jacobs goes down, Zamir White steps in those you know, last four games, and then he gets all the work. I think this will be a split, but I think Zamir White, having been the incumbent, uh, Pierce, their head oh, coach, just, really liking him. I mean, the the, the four game stretch from I, weeks fifteen to eighteen. I realize that wasn't bad, but what I'm saying is, is if, is if Zamir White is what you said he is, the that coach very really, athletic, which is what I said. No, no, no. The coach really likes him. Yes, it's nice that he got nothing for fourteen weeks. They liked him so much that an inefficient, horrible Josh Jacobs that was doing jack squat. They never even complimented him with Zamir White. They loved him that much. They, if you listen to Pierce last year during those times, Josh Jacobs was their guy. People would say, why isn't Zamir White getting play? And yeah, he'd 6 percent of snaps for 14 weeks. Exactly. And he'd say, Zamir White, we love Zamir White. But when you've got Josh Jacobs, you use Josh Jacobs. Like, Josh Jacobs is the king here. Uh, afterwards, though, this is, what, this is how the season ended. The season ended – with Zamir White getting 21 carries a game, he would have had a 17-game pace of 1,687 uh, rushing yards. So he, he was he was not bad, um, still was involved in the passing game, and, and then they let Josh Jacobs go, and then they sign a middling They tried to re-sign Josh Jacobs. Well, that, sure, but they didn't pay up for him. No, but my point is, is like, I think we're just going to disagree on their viewpoint of Zamir White. So who do you think is the star? You think Alexander Madison is a starter, Zamir White's the backup? No, I don't care about that designation for this team. I think it's they're both RB2s. When you stat so you're just going to give 50-50. Yes, pretty much. Yeah, okay. I am. And and the truth is is uh Zamir White they if they wanted him to just be the guy like they they had him on the roster. They just this is the first running back that Antonio Pierce goes out and gets for himself. So mm -hmm. I I just think it's a a backfield that Sounds confusing to me because I know they'll want to run it. And so I think there will be value there. I just I just don't know where it's going to be yet, and it might get muddier if they add another. I mean, you knew they were going to add someone, right? Like this Oh, is yeah. A, I, we said it on the show last week when you were gone. But, I mean, you you have to. They had Amir Abdullah behind them. There was, the, the, there yep. was, there's no running backs here. So they could have either gone out and got one of the you know first running backs in yep. the draft, which would have hurt Zamir White much more, in my yes. opinion than them bringing in Alexander Madison. That could be true, depending on which one they would have taken. Rico Dowdle, one-year deal with the uh, Cowboys coming back. They have a running back now. Rico That's Dowdle. good. They had none. So. Who are they drafting? Uh, I think they – the nice thing for them is that they can do it late. I think it'll be – I'll put it this way. I think they're going to draft one later than people think, and I do not think really? they'll be – I don't think they'll be the first one off the board with it. I think it'll be – they'll be like the third or fourth running back off the board. Do you buy into the team doctor being the Jonathan Brooks doctor? Maybe no. some inside information. If they draft him, they believe that the ACL recovery is going well. No, and I, I to, to the Cowboys' credit, they don't, they don't really do the Cowboy stuff anymore that you expect them to do. Um, they don't. Give me an example. I mean, it, it wasn't that long ago that they said goodbye to you know Cooper while they signed Zeke no, that's, to that's a monster not, deal. 
that's actually uh I mean, letting go of Cooper is another example. They didn't they didn't spend up on him. They made a decision to divest of that selection. They didn't go this offseason and they could have made the splashy move with Saquon or Derrick Henry or somebody like that. That's the kind sure. of old cowboys that I'm talking about. They spend picks on defense and offensive line, and I I just don't know if they're gonna I mean, they might get Jonathan Brooks in the third round or the fourth round. So in that case, they, they'll be fine. But I don't know. Will be it, interesting. I, I do think whoever they draft is going to be very, very relevant with this step chart. Yeah, it'll be – right now it's what? Is Malik Davis still on the roster? Yes. Uh, he is? Deuce okay. Vaughn. Yeah, I mean, Jason's point, well received. They're going to need to add somebody that will – compete to be the starter i mean i think that's the headline whoever they add in the draft will compete to be the starter but i do think they like rico dowdle and um he may have more juice than than some people think yeah i mean they i i wonder what their process was behind the scenes considering how long it took for them to bring dowdle back you know yes they did not win any of these high free agent running back uh contracts but I would imagine they were based on the length of time they took to get anyone back in the door. Uh, I, I would imagine yeah, Dow might those have been shopping and didn't find takers either. That's fair. Um, all right, do we have any other news, Brooksy? That's all for now. Okay, we'll take a quick break and come back with some trending or ending. You know, in retrospect, now that I think about it, because we had a nice spirited debate about Zamir White and the viewpoint of Antonio Pierce and the Raiders. I do realize now, inadvertently, it sounded like I like Antonio uh, uh, Madison. More than Zamir White. It sounded a little bit. No, I, no, just in general. Really? Yeah, it sounded... I don't think so because you said I you hate liked Alexander Madison. Well, I did say that part. So, it But I'm the one arguing that he would impact Zamir White. Yeah. I, so I like Madison less because of how much you like Madison. Uh, yeah, that's I just what feel like heard. I ended up on the wrong side of the Madison situation. Well, you love him. Hmm. This is your dude. Yeah. All right, let's jump in. Trending or ending? All right, our illustrious team over here at the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with their uh, incredible dress apparel have put together a, a list of some trends that have taken place in recent years. Jason and I will be debating whether we believe these trends will continue or not. Mm -hmm. um, so let's begin. Isaiah Pacheco trending or ending 20 opportunities per game. Very involved Super Bowl champions. Uh, he he had a huge role to play. He's had the biggest workload since Kareem Hunt for a Kansas City running back in the uh, Mahomes era. So do we think that Isaiah Pacheco is, I guess, solidified as their dude? Oh, that's so hard to say. You know, it's like you, you need to you need to kind of call your shot now before the NFL draft. They don't have a depth chart. Like they they have one of these NFL depth charts where you go, they have to add someone. They're going to uh, sign a, a, a you know a middling veteran that's out there or draft a player, but I think they've got their guy. I really do. I I think that they they've just won back to back Super Bowls, utilizing him in the playoffs. So I I know at the end of the season, um, Isaiah Pacheco was over twenty opportunities a game. It was a fantastic run to finish the season. But he was so much more than that in the playoffs. 24 attempts, 24 attempts in two games, plus 19 receptions, or, or I'm sorry, targets through the playoffs. This was a guy who was extremely involved. It was a massive chunk of this offense, and they won the Super Bowl. Let me read you the best remaining free agents at running back, and okay. you tell me if it matters to Isaiah Pacheco's workload or anything you view about him. Yeah. I, you already know I, the answer I'm, no? I'm ready to say no. Zeke? No. Rashad no. Penny. Oh, oh, you almost pump faked me there. Uh, Latavius. No. Hart. Dalvin nah, Cook. Uh, uh, no. J.K. Dalvin. Oh, oh. 
Mm, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, what do you think? J.K. Dobbins? No. I think no. You but think that, no? I think no. Yeah. What if it had been Deonta Foreman? Would it that matter? No, I don't, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, look, so, all the so major trending running then. backs. You're going trending. I am going on the trending side. They, they will add a running back at this draft. They, they're going to draft a running back. I will be very surprised based on the Michael P. Ryan and who's Keontae the, Ingram being the backups here. Yeah, who was the uh who was the little guy that everyone wanted to buy into that they drafted? Do you know who I'm talking about? Remember the the micro machine sized running back that everybody was all in on a couple years ago? I, I do I, not remember. Uh Kyle, you've got to remember Sleuth something. it. Find it, Kyle. These depth chart there was a depth chart running back that was tiny that came out and everybody went crazy about his opportunity. Um, and he did absolutely nothing. And Kyle, Darwin Thompson. Darwin Thompson. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, like the rookies coming in and establishing themselves in a, a, a two-time back-to-back Super Bowl championship offense I think is highly unlikely. It's more likely that they would uh, get McKinnon back in the door or something like that. So um, I'm with you. Trending. His underdog best ball ADP right now is running back 14. Wow. So uh, – where, so where do you think he lands? Last year he finished as the running back 16, but he missed three games. Um, that being said, it's fair. It, it, it's a little unfair to qualify that he missed games because most running backs miss yeah, two he, games. Yeah, but he was also like injured in one of them, and his his best run of finishes came at the back half of the year. I I think he's a top 15 running back, so I'm fine with that spot. Okay. Do you agree? Yeah, I I do. I I want I, you still want pieces of the Kansas City offense. I I believe that they will throw the ball a little bit more this year. Some of what they did this past season and relying on the run was due to not having the weapons. But a year or two, Rashi Rice adding Hollywood Brown. I think they'll be able to open it up a little bit. DJ Moore trending or ending uh, top twelve fantasy wide receiver. First time he's ever done, and he was the wide receiver six. Okay. Incredible season from DJ Moore, yet his consistency is still sitting at a C. 47% of the time with games above 10 and a half. Didn't have Justin Fields for the whole year. Won't happen for any of the year this year. They uh, they made the big splash, bringing in reliable Keenan Allen. I mean, I he's the wide receiver 11? That's where he's going in basketball. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make any sense, which That's means stupid. we both – it's super stupid. Yeah, we're both on ending. We're now. both on ending. There's no chance DJ Moore is a top 12 wide I mean, receiver next year. They had – Abigail Williams is going to come in and be the best quarterback of all time. I mean, DJ Moore is a great wide receiver. Yes, I agree. This is not an anti-DJ Moore take. It's a pro C Keenan C Allen Stroud take. DJ Stroud just had two top 15 wide receivers. <laughs> it's not happening. It's not happening at all. Um, Keenan Allen is a machine. A rookie quarterback coming in historically with so much. Not I, historically. I know if you, you. I know if you, you lower the sample size to one year. Historically, that happens pretty frequently. If if you lower it to one year, you've got a fifty percent uh, hit rate of You're, Bryce you were Young. Gonna, you were going to say you know that I push back against that analytical view. Yeah, but I, I and and I love your post about pushing back to analytical views as the sole and only uh operation but i the genuinely believe even with the modern nfl even just looking at the last four years yeah you have cj stroud but you have way more i mean every year there's three or four first round rookies uh you know two to four first round quarterbacks taken and they don't usually come through bryce young was the 101 taken above cj stroud and he's flat out sucked i will agree yes you if you were if you're playing the odds, they're still well below 50-50 that you get that kind of a year. The line set here is trending or ending top 12. So I, we're both ending on that, but I I think 15 is is okay. I think he could be at 15. Man, I, I, I Shane Waldron coming in, passes the ball a ton. They'll probably do a lot of work uh, to further equip Mr. Caleb Williams in this draft, protect him. He extends plays, and when plays are extended, DJ Moore gets open. I will say that. And DJ Moore's athleticism will have a, some monster games. I mean, that's what happened this last year, right? You you had DJ Moore with a 45 fantasy point week against Washington when he went 8 for 230 and 3. But when you look at how it comes, it, maybe at the end of the year he's the wide receiver 15. 
you are not going to enjoy the process of getting there. He's not going to be the possession guy ahead of Keenan Allen, I don't think. You could argue that you didn't enjoy a wide receiver six finish last year. It, exactly. Yeah. So my I, point. I agree with that. I, yeah. I I won't draft him at wide receiver fifteen. If if he drops into the the actual, will you draft him above Keenan? Oh, That's man. really interesting. I think I would prefer so. I think I would prefer to have Keenan Allen, and Keenan Allen will go far later in your startup drafts. I, DJ Moore is younger, more explosive, sexier. I would rather construct Ooh. my roster with – I just meant that as handsome. Right. Um, I, I would rather construct my roster with different explosive young wide receivers that are up near that wide receiver 10, 11, 12, and then add a reliable Keenan later. In the well, let me, let me ask you, will you prefer this player to DJ Moore or not? Trending or ending, DK Metcalf, two consecutive years outside the top 15 for DK Metcalf. Not the kind of trend you wanted if you were a dynasty manager of uh, DK. Last year, wide receiver 16. Year before, wide receiver 18. It's not like he disappears. Always potential for double-digit touchdowns. He was at eight last year, sixth year before, but then two double-digit years before that. So they haven't been there since post-Russell Wilson. Um, 79% of his receptions went for a first down. That was the second among all wide receivers. He's a very go-to type of wide receiver. doesn't matter if you have Lockett or uh, JSN. He is a go-to third down receiver, goal line receiver. Um, had that stupid, stupid, stupid three touchdown game against Dallas that no one, <laughs> no one saw coming and it was, uh, it was against some, me. Someone hurt you. Yeah, he did. But, uh, trending or ending DK Metcalf stays outside the top 15. Well, I'll answer your first question yeah, first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. DJ Moore or DK Metcalf? I would way rather have DK Metcalf than DJ Moore. Uh, Interesting. DK okay. Metcalf is a, a better experience to have in our consistency metric. He's a B. He he doesn't disappear as often as DJ Moore. And even though, you know, if you, you talk, neither quarterback situation is great. A rookie coming in, Caleb Williams, at least you have hope that maybe Future he Hall turns into. Sorry. Yeah, I mean, he could be. No, I, who knows? Um, but you have hope. Like, oh, he could be awesome. Right now, who's the – is it Gino, Gino? Let's say Gino's the quarterback it's again. Gino. They came out and said it. So then you've got – you've got no hope for some massive explosion. Some some like th this quarterback is going to be absolutely incredible under Mike McDonald. Like he's just going to take it to the next level. No, Gino's not doing that. 136 targets for uh, DJ Moore last year, 119 for Metcalf. Very disappointing year for Gino. Yeah, I mean, Metcalf I would. Uh, it, that's a team makeup situation. You'll hear us talk about this a lot. Like, if I took a super reliable week in and week out, like if this is not my number one receiver, I don't mind swinging for the DJ Moore fences here. Um, you know, thirteen hundred plus yards last year, but I, yeah, I think your experience will be more consistent with Metcalf. Wonder what they oh, are. They pretty close. Let me let me check the consistency for Metcalf. Yeah, he's better. 58.8% of the time with a meaningful performance of 10 and a half or more compared to 47% for DJ Moore. And look, they finished 10 spots apart from each other. So that shows you it's not all in that fantasy finish. And this is the time of the year that that's all people look at. Yeah, they just say, well, he finished as the wide receiver six. We've got a truth series that we do exiting the season. If you haven't listened to that, you can go back and listen to the truth about wide receivers. Part one, part two, we talk about these guys. It's not just how they finish. It's what was the process and did they help you win games. DJ Moore super helped you win that one game. I mean, he yes. you won that game against Washington in week whatever, but he hurt you more often than than not. So, yeah. I, now, here's the question, though. Trending or ending about not being a top 15 wide receiver? He'll probably be outside my top 15. They brought back Lockett. You weren't there last week when we talked about the restructured contract that kind of threw some cold water onto JSN's breakout. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot of committed, guaranteed money to Tyler Lockett. Um, so Metcalf is one of a three-headed monster. He is the biggest, strongest, fastest of them all. Yeah, I mean, he's been, like, I realize he's been outside the top 15 the last two years. And that can sound like, like a real poo-poo thing. But he's been the wide receiver 18 and the wide receiver 16. Before that, 12 and 7. He's, he is a top 20 wide receiver. Yeah, if the top fifteen are hanging out inside, he's like his face is smashed against the glass. Yeah, he he he's he, he's allowed to go in and talk to the guys a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he he's he been there before. He doesn't have his own ticket. He can't like the bouncer's going to be like, 
dude, you could come in here. Right. I you, know you're not yeah. like you're allowed. I get it. You played one less game. Right. Exactly. So yeah. yeah. I I you know what? For that reason, I'm gonna say ending. Because DK Metcalf is allowed uh, is allowed inside be, the he'll top fifteen. He'll finish at fifteen. I think he will be allowed in the building. Okay. All right. And yeah. and honestly, if you're a bouncer, you let him in anyways. <laughs> yeah. He's right? the bouncer. He's the bouncer for his own. <laughs> I don't care he's like, who no, no, no. Are. I am allowed in. Yeah. Um, all he, right. <laughs> D, DK Metcalf walks up to the bouncer and he takes a clipboard out of his hand and says, "You're not I'm, on the list." Yeah, okay. And then right. he hands it back and walks right. I thought in. you were gonna say he said, "I am on the list." Yeah. I see well, my name. It's right here. Trending or ending, David and Joku, the line set as a top six fantasy tight end. Will he repeat? He finished at six, but he was the tight end one from week seven on. That's a long run. He wasn't close to the tight end two. He was so dominant. D David Njoku, it's it's really important to realize what happened at the end of last year. Oh, I realized the heck. Oh, of it. yeah, I know he got uh, you a I title. It. I mean, if if you if you had him, you you won. If I mean, there, there's him, a, he's one of the him. one of the most rostered you know championship uh, winners because of what he did the entire second half. He did it through the 11, playoffs. 5, 12, 10, 7, 8, 26, 2, 2, 3, 3. That's fantasy finishes. Wow. It's unbelievable. He was so good. The so run, now you're saying just top six when he was so dominant. But let's talk about names. Missing pieces. Let's talk about names. Because yeah, let's go through it. You're going to put Kelsey above him. He's coming back. He plays yes. for Mahomes. He's going to be there. Plays for Mahomes. Uh, they're, they're the Chiefs, but I get it. I get it. I get are it. They? Laporta? Uh, Laporta, you're going to put above him. Um. You, Andrews, assuming health, you you got to put Mark Andrews above him. That's three spots of the five. Okay, so now he's four. So now the here's the questions: Trey McBride, I would put ahead of David Njoku. I if I'm sitting there in a draft today, uh, because of the fact that you're not coming right back with Joe Flacco in Cleveland, yes, McBride's ahead. And now here's to me the final name. It's going to be Kincaid, right? It is Dalton Kincaid. Yeah. Although you could also throw in George Kittle. Who had his Kinca awesome all, all the Ks, as well. Kincaid, Kittle. That's enough. Um, and uh, I would say, you know, maybe Pitts uh, explodes. So for me, the, the with the news of Jerry Judy getting this Except monster for he contract, he said top six. He did say top six. So yeah, I'm taking. I'm doing it. You're I'm doing going, it. You're yes, going with top repeat. six. Repeat. Now, yes. How much of this is your heart? How much is this? Is thirty eight percent loyalty? Okay, that's yeah. It's a minority. Yeah. Um. I'm still going to take him outside. I'm going to take him outside the top six. Well, how many? I got I got 10 fingers, right? Yes, and you do. And the ring from my championship goes on one of them, right? Yes. That's the percentage that is my heart. <laughs> okay. That amount. Okay. About 10%. 10%. Yeah. Um, Kincaid's never done it. Pitts has never done it. And this run wasn't three weeks long. McBride so, has only had half a season. Andrews can't stay healthy. There are easy Joku, arguments yeah. to make against most of these options. I think he can do it. I think top six makes oh, I, sense. I definitely think he can do it. I, I also think receptions. I also think Dalton Schultz needs to be talked about, you know, in those lines as well as as a potential top six guy. I I can agree, uh, especially with Stroud year two. Um, final year of Amari Cooper's contract. Part of maybe why they spent the money on Judy. And then you brought up Judy, them wanting to, him to be the second target. Uh, here's some breaking news for you. Um, they wanted that from him in Denver for mm -hmm. every single year of his career. He wants don't always – Yeah. they're not always realized. No. I, I think I want a yacht. <laughs> like I'm not positive because I feel like the you upkeep – You don't know if you want a yacht. Well, the upkeep would be bad and I would never use it. You know, we're landlocked here in Arizona. <laughs> but I still think I want a yacht. But I'm not going to get a yacht, you know? And so that's like you. Where want, would you store it? Probably in the ocean is my guess, right? Isn't that? I, that, I was trying are there to see lake if you, yachts. There's lake yachts. If the lake's big enough, right? Like just Tahoe. They got to get uh, helicoptered in though, right? Oh, how do you? Do get you build a, them on the water? How do you get a yacht to a lake? Hey, let's ask the cruise guy over there. No, um, no, 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 no. Really, really, really quick because this is so important to me. Yeah. These yachts that are called yachts that are still small boats, they're not yachts. You're saying that a yacht can't be a yacht unless it meets a size requirement. A size, not just it's like an the Pluto requirement. planet situation. Exactly. It's like, oh, that's yeah, okay. You can call it a planet if you're a kid, right? Because you you don't know the science, but it's not a planet, right? It's not big enough. So, and would you consider stripping yacht status from certain boats? Oh yeah, for sure. Kids mm. kids can still call them yachts, uh, but I don't know how they get those to lakes if they you are know, even in lakes. You know, Al, you, you're sitting here and you you think I'm crazy. They got to they, they can't bring in boats on helicopter? 
I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm, so. I'm not an expert, but I don't I think, think they're so. dropping a yacht in a lake via helicopter. Wait, what are they, they, do, they're what are they probably, doing? If they do, they're not cutting the cord. They're not just like, okay, bombs away. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, I, I think helicopters could play a big role in this whole Jason wanting a yacht situation. I'm, I know people are furiously vetting it back there. I'm on have it. they ever delivered a yacht via helicopter? So the problem is a lot of yachts have helicopter pads. And so when you search for helicopter yacht, I guess they're bigger than I thought, huh? They must be big. The, the <laughs> helicopter lands on the yacht. Yeah, no, no. It's not carrying If the that's yacht. true. Hmm. You're going to need like those. How what, big are yachts, man? What are those? What are those? Uh, those big like two propeller. They're called uh, two propeller helicopters. No, they're not. No, what, what are you talking about? Yeah, I'm talking about the the helicopters that have like the the propellers in the back and the front, like the big military. Yachts can be delivered by helicopters to provide flexibility for business operations. Yeah, but those are Pluto yachts. Okay, those All are right. called tandem rotor. Thank you, tandem helicopters. rotors. So really, it is two. Yeah, I, two I, propeller I helicopters. Didn't know, there's not a secret word for a helicopter. Well, no, like if it's got two. Rotors, it doesn't count as a helicopter. No, I thought it had like a like a name. Like, oh no, I did. I was thinking of a Chinook. That's a yeah. That's a that's one. Yeah, of that's the, what I was. That's the name I was looking for. All right. Um, where were you on the David and Joker top six? I'm out. I okay. think he's. I think he's okay. right there. I definitely think he could finish there. But with the Jerry Judy signing and the other up and coming um, tight ends, the young guys, the McBrides, the Kincaids, and obviously Laporta that I have ahead of him, I'll push him out. All right, I won't so push I'll, him out. I'll give so you I'll give you a chance out there to consider the yacht takes as we take another break and come back in just a minute. It's a pretty good point you made about the like if it has a helip- helipad on it, mm-hmm. maybe it can't maybe it can't be lifted by it. But you, a couple that of- means they got to build it, right? Like a, a lake yacht then has to be built on site. Can you drive it? In? They can tow them. Wait a minute. How do you make hold a on, turn? Hold on, hold on. You just told me they got a helipad on the thing, and that means that the helicopter can't lift it. But you can tow. How many cars can you fit on one of those yachts? Hundreds? Thousands? Not thousands. <laughs> Millions? <laughs> You're telling me you could tow a yacht, but you can't carry a yacht in the air. It There's different size yachts. It depends what size. What made you the yacht you, authority? You asked me. <laughs> no, that, that'll do it. All right. Also, the Chinook is... Um, Boeing. So what you, maybe don't lift a boat with that. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> all right. Yeah, I mean, watch out. Um, you just you just gotta make sure the plug doors have four bolts. That's all. Okay. Um, all right. I'm. I want to do one more trending or ending here before we close it down. Maybe get some mailbag. It's a tough one. Travis Etienne as a top ten running back. He was number three last year. Mm-hmm. On the back of a ton of touchdowns in the first half of the year. Which I give him all the credit for in the world for doing. He did do it. It's not easy to score a bunch of touchdowns. The The disproportionality between the first and second half was tremendous. The disproportionality between top 16 defenses and bottom 16 defenses was tremendous. He was almost 10 points different between the two. The first half of the season for him before the bye week he averaged 18.8 fantasy points per game was absolutely outstanding uh the last nine games of the year after their bye week 11.4 was very very disappointing i mean doug peterson said they wanted to reduce his workload but they also they also tried to do that last year it didn't work no i don't think tank was ready to step up tank big yeah and he's not gonna be he's not gonna be ready you don't think there's any chance that there is a chance yes but it's low likelihood to me I, I maybe don't start with some goal line fumbles this year, Tank. But I was disappointed in a lot of what I saw from Travis Etienne. Uh, you know, sub for a carry, and you and you saw it on the field. There were plays where I just kept expecting him to uh, break the tackle, hit the edge, and, and and he didn't get there. He did score a ton of touchdowns and was a a true volume play. I mean, th- this guy was on the field seventy three percent of the snaps. I think it won't be a bad idea to lower his volume a little bit and allow his efficiency to increase. I am in on Travis Etienne, and I will have him as a top 10 running back. I think the Jaguars still see him as the centerpiece of that running back room, 
and they're going to need him. And the offense, even though I'm not a believer in Trevor Lawrence as a superstar, Trevor Lawrence is an average NFL quarterback, and that's good enough to have a good offense. So he'll have touchdown opportunities again, just like you said. Like you don't, you're not holding it against him that he scored a bunch of touchdowns. That's also yeah, that's pretty a, cool. It's, it's a good feature, and they seem committed to this running back room. I don't expect them to add anybody else. They re-signed Ernest Johnson. Tank Bigsby's on the roster, and Travis Etienne is there. So, I mean, if they added Zeke and you'd worried about goal line or something stupid, then that's, that would change my view. But I don't think they're going to add anybody. He had 340 opportunities this last season. If they were to take that number down to 300, I think you'll still have a top 10 running back. They were also to, you know, he had a lot of work to do. 31st ranked offensive line when it came to run blocking. Submarine their season. Yeah, and it's, he is good. I don't oh, want to. Poo- I don't want to poo-poo him. Saying you did a little poo-pooing. You said he didn't get the edge, and, and that th- really hurt. Yeah, and that that's why I want to. I want to say I do believe he is a good, talented, um, still young enough, explosive running back. He's twenty five years old. Uh, he came so in top a, ten trending or ending. Tre- trending. I, I I'll have him as a top ten running back. In so it's a hard bar because you can't get hurt to do it. Obviously, you really can't. You can't. You know, there's so many running backs out there. You know, you're going to be talking about. Um. Right now, the underdog best ball. I'm going to read you the order. Okay. CMC. Yeah. Bijan. Uh huh. Breeze. Okay. Gibbs. Okay, that's a Kyron. There's the answer. Taylor. Taylor six. Yeah. Okay. Saquon I would take seven. All six of those ahead. Yep. Saquon seven. I take okay. Saquon. A Chan eight. Okay. Eight Chan. Eight Chan. Well, that's uh, a website. Yeah. Don't um, go there. No, don't. <laughs> Is it? Is it? I thought it was 4chan. Um, both of them probably exist. Uh, Jacobs? Josh Jacobs? Jingleheimer Schmidt? I okay. mean, what do you mean Josh Jacobs? What are the Jacobs? I don't know. Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> He's back. All right. Number 10 is ETN behind Jacobs. But behind ETN is Henry in Baltimore. I, I, I'd take ETN over Henry. Um, Rashad White, though, at 12? That's a tough one. So for me, that that this confirms. That was, very, that was very quick for you on the uptake to to go to the vintage Brandon Jacobs. Yeah, by I knew you'd like that. Yeah. Um. I there was a couple like Josh Jacobs will be behind Etn for me for sure. Uh, Devon Achan. There's reasons why you would want and prefer someone like Travis Etn over Achan. Uh, he I I see I see Etn in the same kind of tier as Saquon there as the running back seven. He's absolutely worthy of being the seventh pick. I wouldn't take him ahead of the six guys that you first laid out. All right. I think we told you that Brooks would take care of the mailbag. Oh, yes. But I would never. No, I would do that. Yeah, go. go do this, Kim. Mailbag. Mailbag. Oh, man, like a blowhorn. Yeah, love what's a, it. What's a blowhorn? I don't know what's what that a, is. An air horn? Um, maybe that's what I meant. That was that was good, Brooks. Thank you. Nailed um, it. You did grow <laughs> Oh, in the confidence. <laughs> You love to see it, Brooks. You do. Um, that's a that's a man that. Um, oh, a blowhorn's like those. Is that that is a thing? Though. Yeah, that's a that's a thing. Yeah. That's that's very loud. All right. If you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. That's also where you can find the ultimate draft kit right now, and you can dial our voicemail hotline with a question three zero two four six four TFFB. We do have a voicemail question waiting for us, Jason. Oh, fantastic! Dare, dare I click this button? I'll allow it. Hey, ballers. Love the show. Uh, this is Trey calling in. I am the commissioner of a dynasty league, and I really need help with the, um, I guess, schedule for the off season. When should the league op- open back up? When should we be able to drop and add players? How? What's the timeline from the time the Super Bowl ends to before the draft? Thanks, guys. So I can speak to what we do, which is what you should also do. <laughs> okay. um, when the championship game is over and a champ has been crowned, mm. this is week 17 in our league, so you're going into week 18 of the season. We are not into playoffs yet. The Super Bowl has not arrived. And it's next season, baby. Well, you can you can pick players up. You're in the off season mode. You could drop guys. You could trade. It's all back active because that's the entire point of a dynasty league is to have fun and to be able to do off season transactions. That's how we do it. 
Yeah, and I, I guess I don't, I don't mind if uh, you keep it closed down till the Super Bowl, and then after the Super Bowl's over, you reopen it back up. Just a forced breath. Just a breath. Yeah, just you know, probably not a lot of action happening in the post championship, uh, pre Super Bowl period of time. Anyways, the the truth is, there's no actual wrong answer. There's no, yeah. you know, if you wanted to wait until the NFL draft. And then open it up, you know, the draft kicks off the next season. It's just what your league wants. Yeah, ultimately, what we're I think what Jason's trying to convey is that, like, what makes the Dynasty League great is the fact that you have activity year-round. You can be thinking about your team if you want to. And people don't have to be hyperactive for the couple weeks after the Super Bowl if they don't want to. There's not a lot to do, so. Yeah, but leading leading up to the draft, you, you really want to be able to, like, trade picks, call your shots. I mean, there's been tons of free agent signings for us since the Super Bowl. Yeah. I mean, just little cursory um, flyers. That You're people saying our, wait, our waivers in yeah, our, our league. Yeah, our own waivers yeah. in our own league. We People have added, uh, what, Colby Parkinson, who got picked up for a bigger deal than expected. And um, it's just important that you make sure you relay the rule set yes. to everybody with advance notice. Yeah, you can't just open it up quietly and be yeah. like, let and me then, get all the guys. That's right. Also, um, you know, FAB is operated differently. If You might be on a waiver system, but if you're on a FAB system where you've got a free agent acquisition budget, we personally have an in-season and an off-season budget. So basically, it's a $100. Uh, that's your allotment that you get. We, we on kickoff, when that ball is kicked from the tee, we reset the in-season to 100 for waiver transactions. And then when the champion is crowned and we start the next league year, we reset it to 100 for the off-season. YouTube question. Um, LJ wants to know late to the party. Do you have any openings for the listener league? We do have openings to the listener league. We have, let's see, there's 14. It's a 14 team league. Yeah. We've already given away one. Uh, and we're three of those teams. And we're three of those teams. And there's a champion. Unfortunately, it wasn't us. So he's. So stupid, that, that makes it 10 returned. and we've given one away. So that makes it nine. Okay. Nine spots left. We $1,600 just... a spot. <laughs> My Zell is, uh, no, 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 no. These are way more valuable than that. Um, we will uh, open it up at some point um, nearer to the season. Pay attention for submissions. We'll say it once on the show and once only, and then we'll that we'll tell you how to submit it, and you can apply. And then we, we you know, we do contests as well. Through. As you say, if you pick up the ultimate draft kit, you're going to give yourself an opportunity. I'm going to say it like that. Yeah, I mean, the we do a couple of giveaways uh, based on people that have you know supported us and gotten the ultimate draft kit. And every time that we do that giveaway, anyone who has previously got it is in it. So, like, we just did a giveaway. And if you bought the UDK but you didn't win that giveaway, well, you're entered in the next giveaway as well. YouTube question from Adrian. Dynasty question. What's the latest? Oh, I'm sorry. What is the least you would take for Kyron Williams in a Dynasty League? Whew. Jason is Hot and probably bothered. wearing, like, Kyron Williams Undies. underpants. Yes, I yeah, am. like just his face. Car uh, it's a cartoon. Well, no, it's a, car know, it's a cartoon. Get, it's just a drawing. Let's, let's not get into details. I don't okay. want to know where any of the graphics are. There's a little on just, the underpants. It's just a pattern. Um, I'll show you after. No, okay. Uh, what's the least you would take? I mean, that's a that's a little bit of a a strange question. I think if it, it all depends on your view of Kyron. Well, your view of Kyron and, you know, if, if you're saying like rookie picks, your view of the incoming rookie class, right? Kyron Williams was the running back six and didn't play five weeks of the NFL season last year. Um, he had 1,100 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns. The offense is the same. Uh, he was exp He was just so heavily utilized. If you looked at weeks 12 through 17, he would have averaged 371 attempts for almost 2,000 yards. And 17 touchdowns. Now, you know, he doesn't have the draft capital or the contract to say he is the future of the Rams no matter what. Agreed. Uh, it's a fifth-round pick. He's not been paid big money, and that is your risk. That is the risk you accept with Kyron Williams in a dynasty league versus, um, I don't know, Saquon, right? Like, if you, if you put those two players up, which one would you rather have in a dynasty league? I, th I think it's okay to answer either way. Yeah, I think it's okay. For me, it is an easy Kyron, but you can make an argument that the draft capital coming into the NFL, the new massive contract, and the history should side you on the on the on the Saquon side. But the question is like, so let's put this to a, a rookie draft pick. 
the lowest that I would take, if this is a non-super flex startup, I would not trade Kyron for Caleb Williams. So whatever that is, that's like the 106 usually right now. I would not trade him for Troy Franklin. I would not trade him for Brian Thomas Jr. So for me, the lowest I would go is probably 103 with those big three wide receivers. Yeah. Um, there you go. It'll be interesting. Like, I, I just have this – I think Kyron could – like. The Are you more anti-Kyron? I know I'm, like, crazy pro-Kyron. I think I'm, like, normal Kyron maybe. Okay. And you're just, like, crazy. But what I guess the question is, what is normal? What do you think the average person thinks about Kyron? I think that the average person is pretty into Kyron. Yeah. I, I, I guess I'd be slightly down from there, like okay. a step. Like, if there's a certain like – you're on a staircase. You're at the top of the staircase. Sure. And the average person's in the middle of the staircase. I'm just like a step below. You're like end. a step below, looking up, because you're ready. To, you're re you are ready to leave the staircase. I'm, I'm willing well, to take some steps. Down. You're you're ready to. You want a head start so that if people start exiting, you're like I'm out the door first. Cam Akers, Todd Gurley, Sony Michelle, um, these were leading rushers for an entire season for the Rams. Mm -hmm. So there is a little bit. The part of me that has me two steps below the middle is the part that says, "Well, Shanahan makes it work with anybody." And that part tells me that McVay could get McVay can produce a number one running back with Cam Akers at the end of the season, or Sonny Michelle, mm -hmm. or you know Darnell Anderson. But Kyron, like I, I think Kyron's pretty, pretty darn good. So if they're he, if they're committed to him, I think he's top five. That's the that's just the commitment. real question is is are they committed to him? And I, that's where I'm in because I am, my belief is that they're fully committed. To right. Him. Because when they were fully committed to Gurley. You know, he was the running back one. Then the next year, he was the running back one. Then, the, you know, he was he was the guy for a long stretch. Obviously, the wheels fell First off. First round draft pick. For sure. No, yeah, yeah. a lot easier to be committed to Gurley than to Kyron Williams. Not just first round draft pick. If you want to throw the negatives out there, the yellow and red flags, his body size is not one that makes you go, eh, he can, he can handle a workhorse role for three years. You just, maybe he can't. He, it's, what's funny is I don't think Kyron is, per, I think Kyron is, like above average at several things, but I don't think he's super great at one. Like he's not, he's not the most explosive have, athlete. He's no. not the best pass catcher in the league. He's not the best goal line back in football. He, but he just, he's he doesn't just well, have his superpower. Like, no. like H and speed. No, he just does a bunch of stuff. Pretty darn good. Yeah. Well, pretty darn well. Superman does good. Yeah. Uh, let's close it out here because uh, I did want to talk about this player. Maybe we end with a spicy take. But YouTube question from Jacob Noonan. What do you all think about Jordan Addison's dynasty value without Kirk Cousins? And I, I, I have a hot take. Oh, okay. All right. Then I know what your take is. You do. I th If you know so. my take. If you can predict what I'm going to say. Okay. Because I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. My my take is that I view a certain less liked player more than Addison. Oh, a certain less liked player. Yeah. I mean, I I couldn't guess that, but I'm gonna say, uh, I figured your take would be something like Jordan Addison is Jahan Dotson or Jordan Addison. Who's, oh, okay. who's your who's your player? Jamison Williams. Okay. I think Jamison Williams, I might prefer him to Addison in but, a dynasty But league. the question is, is that pro Jamison Williams or is that anti-Jordan Addison? A little bit of both, baby. Okay. It's so. a little bit of both. <clears throat> I like Jamison more than the average man. I know that Kyle has, I mean, he might have turned off his microphone and his headset and quit the show by now just hearing that. But, um, yeah, I'm worried about Addison. That's the. I think that's the headline you wanted, which it, is I'm worried about when the best deep passer in the league departs. I'm worried about you. When it's Sam Darnold, I'm worried about you. When you're never going to be the one, I'm worried about you. Yeah, I mean, it's a little early to know who the quarterback is. Obviously, right now it is Sam Darnold, but all the rumors and the transactions that they've made. Okay, make it J.J. McCarthy. Now how excited are you for Addison? I would be slightly less excited with J.J. McCarthy <laughs> than, not than even for, Darnold. Than Darnold. Yeah, not, I, but not from a dynasty perspective. From a dynasty perspective, I would love – if they get J.J. McCarthy. I think McCarthy's good and can produce a lot. I also believe Jordan Addison is a very good wide receiver. He is very good. Do so, you think Mooney's a good player? I think Mooney is a good player, but nowhere near what Addison is. I don't think Mooney is as good a route runner, uh, is as good at getting open 
um, as as Addison. Addison Addison season was pretty wild because you didn't really you had like two ton of touchdowns. Yeah, you had two number like this is a his whole season independent of a quarterback change. I'd be I'd be saying like if you did trending or ending for Addison, I'd be like out because ten touchdowns. Yeah, that's not a sticky stat. That, Hard to repeat. You know, he's he's a five eleven, one seventy five receiver. That you know, he's a first round pick. I mean, he's very good. I'm not. I'm not saying he's not. It's just his consistency was not there. He played a lot of games without Justin Jefferson. I mean, six weeks six, six through twelve, he missed. He was without uh, Jefferson. And his his polar his performances were like sixty three one. 118. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, a lot of those. Kirk went down in week eight, um, I believe. So, you know, you, if you look at the first eight weeks um, w- when you had a quarterback, and obviously Kirk's gone, so that's important. But those first eight weeks, which were the first eight weeks of Jordan Edison's career, do you remember where Jordan Edison was before Kirk went down? Wide receiver what? What's uh, your guess? For the first eight weeks, I'm guessing he was the wide receiver. Which is half the season. I'm going to guess 10. You guessed it on the dot. Oh, really? He yeah. Was the wide receiver ten. Yeah, he, was, he had an insane uh, week seven. Obviously. Yeah, he was he was uh, looking great. Now, how many touchdowns did he have in ten? In, in I know eight, he was eight a, weeks. Uh, it was a seventeen game pace of like fourteen yeah, and a half touchdowns. So, no, I, he's a good player. I, I'm worried about him. That's all. I, I I would be worried as well. I I am very pro Addison as a talent. I am very anti Addison as a fantasy relevant player this season especially once Hawkinson comes back, you've got Jefferson, and you've got a poor quarterback. So. And I'm anti-Addison, anti-Madison, anti-Radison. I hate the hotel. Oh, I hate the hotel. Man, it's the worst. I will not go there. Because of the, the Addison. The name. Yeah. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for today's episode of the podcast. Thank you for joining us. Back next week, the trifecta returns. Don't miss a minute. Check out our YouTube. We'll catch you then. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.